Welcome to We Believe, a consideration of religious beliefs and God's Word, examined in conversation by James F. Walsh, an attorney and Roman Catholic deacon, and Dr. Richard Shriver, United Methodist minister and professor of theology. Each discussion embraces carefully chosen subjects, selected in an effort to deepen your religious awareness in the sincere hope that we believe will help provide a bridge of understanding among all the children of God. Hello, welcome to We Believe. I'm Jim Walsh, deacon with the Diocese of Nashville, and this is my faithful uh, permanent whatever, guest, whatever you are, whatever Richard, I am, uh, Dr. Richard Shriver. And hello, Dr. Jim. Shriver has more degrees than a thermometer, so pay attention to him when he's talking <laughs> to you today. Uh, Richard, you, uh, you and I had a good session last time. We, we talked about, uh, about how we got the, the New Testament. There are 27 books in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. In the New Testament. Now, there are two theories as to how we got those books. Are you ready for this? Two theories, okay. Uh, one is it the had... The right one and the wrong one. Well, <laughs> you make your own. One is the New Testament came down from heaven on a golden cord, all divided up in chapter and verse and, and, verse and bound in Morocco. That's that, one that's, theory. That's wrong because it was a rainbow. <laughs> okay, it slid down a rainbow. Yeah, yeah. The other is it had something to do with a, me a meeting of the Catholic bishops at a place called Hippo and Carthage originally. Would you please tell us about that? Wow. That's sort of covering Notice everything. Notice I put that <laughs> right on you, see? Yeah. I'm supposed to represent the Protestants, and, yeah. and you, you dumped that one on me. Yeah. Uh, Sneaky, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, how the New Testament got put together, uh, and, and we did talk yeah. about that in the last show, uh, there were so many documents, yeah. and the church was so splintered during the times of persecution that when finally the church became the religion of the empire, the Roman right. Empire in the fourth century, uh, they began deciding, you know, we've got to have uh, a collection that, that represents what Christianity believes. And they went through quite a long time of deciding between about 1,500 documents. And to make the long story short, uh, uh, Bishop Athanasius in Alexandria, yeah. which is at the mouth of the Nile in Egypt, Bishop uh, Athanasius uh, selected a 27 as the ones he recommended. That was in the 360s. Yeah, about, then it was about 360. It came on up to the 390s yeah. and at Hippo and then later in 397 in, in Carthage, in Carthage uh, the uh, Synod of the Church or the Collection of Bishops mm -hmm. uh, with representatives from all over the empire and all, all over the church. Uh, selected the 27 books that are our uh, New, Testament. New Testament. And yes, it, it was the decision uh, of the church to pick those 27 books out of some 1,500 documents. And to make it a little easier, let's just talk about the Gospels, because that kind of centers in on one genre. Is that the word? Genre? Oh, I'm impressed. How about that? I got yeah. that written down back over here somewhere. Anyway, to make it easy, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, some, some scholars say there might have been as many as 50 Gospels, documents claiming to be Gospels. But out of that, they just chose those, those, those four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, the truth is, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had probably been accepted by most Christians for a, a long time before that. So that probably was an easy decision. Probably well known, yeah. But there were others, for example, like the Apocalypse or the, the you know, Revelation. That, that was kind of shaky, and, and, and not everybody agreed with that one. The Book of Revelation, right. Uh, or in the Catholic Bible, it's called the Apocalypse, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, the, I'm sure there were some heavy debates. It's yeah. the only book in... Uh, uh, in the New Testament that is, uh, that deals with last things that's yeah. an apocalypse. Uh, 
book of Daniel in the Old Testament does that. But, but you've told me that in some Protestant groups, it's, it's really difficult for them to face the fact that human beings had a hand in selecting the books. Is that, would you say that's still true? Well, I think, you know, you, you made light of the idea of sliding down a rainbow yeah. on a golden cord yeah. written in heaven. In my classes every day, I have students, and this won't sound strange to yeah. our audience, I have students who, in quoting a passage of Scripture, introduce it by saying, God says. Well, in know, a certain God sense. God says, which is the implication that yeah. God wrote this. Yeah. And so, yes, for a lot of people who, who believe that either God controlled the hand of the human who wrote it, yeah. uh, they're offended oh. that, that we talk about the church deciding like on... Uh, 27 books out of 1,500 Well, documents. for the Catholics, we do believe in a certain sense God wrote it in the sense of He selected and motivated and moved human beings the to write. The whole issue yeah. of inspiration. Yeah, we, yeah. we're going to talk about a whole, or have talked about, a, about inspiration, a whole session on it. But basically, <clears throat> God selects people and moves them to write in the sense the way He wants them to write. But it's not like He's got a dictaphone. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I think the historic position of the church on that would be that God doesn't violate our no. free freedom to, no. That's right. uh, to be ourselves, to be individual. But you see, as far as the New Testament goes, I think it's kind of easy compared to what we're going to talk about. Well, we're going to talk about uh, how the books in the Old Testament, or what we Christians call the Old Testament, were selected. Yeah, and I want to show you all... I don't know if the camera can pick this up or not, but this is my Bible and this is Jim's Bible. And can you see, they're both the, the same essential book, <coughs> but his is thicker. Why that's, is it, Jim? That's because I've got something called the Apocrypha in it. Or you are, because this is a Protestant Bible. <laughs> that's, which is that's, the one I always That's the use. funny thing about it is, both of these are Revised Standard Version Bibles, essentially the same edition except that this one, uh, and on the rib back here it says, Holy Bible and Apocrypha. That's right. Uh, so this one has the books that he's getting ready to talk about. And this is the book that's read from the pulpit in England, in the Catholic churches. The RSV that yeah, it is. because it's a good English translation, <laughs> although the, it's the Protestant Bible. It's, it's, you suppose they're confused by now? What you're saying is this Protestant Bible is the approved Bible for Catholics in, in England. England. They use it because it's I an English translation. Yeah. You know, they're proud of the fact. It's, a, it's nice. It's a well Well, I think thing. the reason I use <coughs> it, there are a lot of edition, a lot of translations that have come since the RSV. I think it's still the best modern English Yeah, it's Bible. got a certain dignity mm -hmm. to it. All right, now let's talk about, I'll tell you the Catholic point of view on this. And then you can tell me the Protestant point of view. We're talking now, folks, about the Old Testament. Let's just, let's call it the Old Testament. The Christians would call it. Jews wouldn't call it that, but we Christians it's would call Hebrew it. It's Hebrew Scripture, yeah. It's Hebrew Scripture. You want to know what's in the Old Testament. Who do you suppose you would ask? Well, you'd ask a rabbi. It's their book, right? Yeah, it's theirs. Now, but what rabbis would you ask? Well, it seemed logical you'd go to the Holy Land, maybe Jerusalem, that's the center of, of the Jewish nation, or was at the time, right? Except, Richard, you know what happened in 70 and 135? It got destroyed. Yeah, yeah the Romans could see the Jews revolted on those two occasions against the Romans. That made the Romans mad. It wasn't good to revolt against the Romans because they came in and killed everybody, and the ones that got away were dispersed all over the Roman Empire. Well, <clears throat> they kicked out Christians and Jews in 135. But anyway, the point is, a lot of these Jewish people went to Alexandria. Why? Because it was a commercial center, but also it was a great learning center. The city at the mouth of the <clears throat> Nile in right. Egypt. And the largest and best university or library in the world was in Alexandria. It was uh, Aristotle's. Aristotle started, I guess, under... Alexander the Great, and he named the town after himself. Anyway, so what happened was in that era, at that time, people were speaking and writing in Greek, right? 
Right. Well, yes. that was the all Greek to me, isn't it? Scholarly language. language. All right. Yes. So the rabbis translated the New Testament in or the Old Testament into Greek. From, uh, from, Hebrew, from Hebrew. Hebrew. It was originally written in Hebrew. Because everybody was Translate talking in Greek. Greek. If you weren't talking in Greek, you couldn't be in business. I mean, it was just... The there was English another says. reason, too, and that is that the written Hebrew language had no vowels. That's so right. So it was extremely hard to read and understand, and the Greek language was a much better written language. Than, uh, mm -hmm. than the Hebrew. Well, so that's what that happened. And then Christianity comes along. And you know that, that Christians have contended that the, that the Old Testament proves the, the validity, proves that Jesus was a Jewish Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so the Christians were using the, the canon of the Old Testament. Canon just means list of books used by the rabbis at Alexandria to prove that Jesus Christ was divine. Because when they spoke of Scripture, that's what they meant. They meant the Old Testament. And that's because most of the original Christians were all Jews. That's right. Yeah. Well, so that is what, where we begin to get the Alexandrian canon. But when we come back from, from the break, maybe you could, or maybe we'll have time before we go, the Alexandrian canon had more books in it, was broader, you might say, than another group in, in the Holy Land. Eventually, some Jews got together in a place called Jamnia. Jamnia. And that was near Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But they had run Christians and, and Jews out of Jerusalem. I guess they got as close as they could. And that's when we got the, the what do you call it, Jamnia well, Council? The Jamnia Council was before the dispersion. Was it, it was really? in 93 AD, and the dispersion was 135. So well, the, it was the a, real it was dispersion a, was 135, but there were also some in 72. Oh, there was, a, there was a great slaughter in Jerusalem, yeah. yes. But this occurred in 93. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, any any event, Richard, when we come back from the break, we'll kind of turn it over to you. You can tell us about the Jamnian meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll jam up the <laughs> wires with the truth about it. All right. <laughs> well, folks, stay right with us. We'll be back in just a minute. So don't go away. And we'll continue our quest of the question, how the Old Testament got put together, at least for Christians. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today's We Believe is brought to you by a grant from your local Knights of Columbus Council. Founded by Father Michael McGivney, the Knights of Columbus began when a few men gathered in a church hall in 1882. Today, the Knights of Columbus has a membership of over one and a half million men with local councils spanning the globe. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal service order of Catholic men dedicated to providing support to the individual, the family, and the community. The principles of the order are charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. The Knights of Columbus truly surge with service. For more information, contact your local council or write We Believe, Post Office Box 50654, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. That's We Believe, Post Office Box 50654, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. And now, back to We Believe. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're discussing how the Old Testament got put together. And we have our... Because we've solved the problem of how the New Testament got... Oh, we did that <laughs> weeks ago. But now we've got Byron Warner here. He's our moderator. Richard, be very careful what you say. Because he could become very angry and violent if you make him mad. I'm terrified. It's, it's a natural talent. Um, uh, I, I got just, it from my dad. We're just kidding. We're, we're, we're glad to have you. So am I. Yeah, all right. Sorry, Dad. Okay. Um, Isn't he our producer? He's our producer. We have to do what he says. He's our producer. 
Yeah. Okay, boss, uh, what you got? <laughs> I'm telling you, I will be so glad when Kimberly gets back so she can. Well, you're really not you. as pretty as Kim is. <laughs> Tell but, me about it. But you're very competent, so we stand well, in awe of your great wisdom. Competence is, is something we all, I certainly strive for. And all right. I know I will get there one day. Today, though, I am at my most incompetent because I don't really have any kind of a road map. Uh, so I want you to treat me as uh, just a total ignoramus, which, Fresh. of course, I am. Yeah, that won't be very difficult. No, right? not now. Not <laughs> certainly here. And explain well, well, to let, me. Let me finish, finish my little dissertation. Oh, all right. All right. Church is <laughs> <class. laughs> you were, you're and, awful. And, and then uh, Richard can refute everything I say. Okay, so the Jamnian and the Alexandrian right. canons, the difference between the, the, the two the point, and who says the so. The point I'm trying to make is that in Alexandria, there was a cannon. A, a cannon mm -hmm. started out meaning a yardstick, a measuring device. Not a gun. Not a gun. Not a gun. No, not a gun. Yeah. But it, it just listed the books in the, in the Old and New Testament. That's called a cannon. Now, Catholics came out with 46 books, more or less, in the Old Testament, depending on how you divide them up. Which is why his Bible is thicker than mine. Yeah. Because mine only has 39 in, right. there's, there's in the Old It's about Testament. seven books. Yeah. Now, over in, in Jerusalem, or near Jerusalem, there were another group of rabbis, and they had a more restrictive canon. In other words, they had less books in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament than then. Interestingly enough, and this is an aside, one of the reasons they rejected some of these 46 books was that they did not believe it, it was written in Hebrew. But then in the, when we discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls back in the 1940s, we discovered, sure enough, here a couple of them were written in Hebrew. But anyway, that's an aside, and we'll go there. Now, the Catholic Church, when it had to decide what books to include in the Old Testament, look to the Alexandrian canon, which had contained more books than they did to the Jamnian, or we'll say Jerusalem or Holy Land canon. The reason they did, Baron, is because before Jamnia, Christian people were preaching the gospel in Alexandria, in Greek. And they kept using the Alexandrian canon to prove to Jews that Christ was their Messiah. Are you with me? I'm with you. Naturally, when they got to Hippo, and you know, sooner or later, the, the church said, okay, we've got to figure out what's in the New Testament, what's in the Old Testament. You're talking about the Council of Hippo. The Council of Hippo. And they talked about it and selected the Alexandrian canon. That was at Hippo in 393. In 397... He just made a huge jump of 300 years. And, and well, uh, I was did. I was very From surprised. From Jamnia to to Hippo is three hundred years. Well, I know, but you know we're moving right along. Right we only got yeah, twenty six right, minutes. Got you know. Yeah. All right. So then they met again. This will be better <laughs> for you. They met again in three ninety seven at Carthage, and guess what? They adopted the Alexandrian canon again. And then after that, they met again about twenty years later in Carthage, and they adopted it again. And then they met again, I think, in Florence, and they adopted it. And finally, they met again in Trent after the Protestant Reformation. And they said, anybody who wants to be a Catholic and doesn't accept this, let him be anathema. Which you know what that kind of means, <laughs> either accepts it or go to hell. Excommunicate that, and that's, anathema. That's it. Now, yep. the point I'm trying to make with which they Richard... They were really is, nice folks at Trent, yes, weren't they? Yeah. Richard will disagree with this. <laughs> but the, the point is that... Uh, that's pretty much consistently the position of the Catholic Church. But you see, Richard... Except you've left out that the, that the Vatican councils of the 1960s has unanathematized Oh, yeah. Well, they're not, they're not anymore metathematized or whatever they metathematized. The problem with Richard is he's going to disagree with me about all this. I'm going to ask him about yes, it. And, Do I, and, I smell and, trouble uh, in paradise? He here? is trying. He's trying to look at the Catholic Church then as now. You see, at that time they might have had all these councils, a gem at Jam at, at Hippo no and Arthur yeah. at Carthage, and and they said this is what the rule is. Now, if you have a council like that, people have to pay attention and agree. 
Well, back then they often said, yeah, yeah, well, that's what those guys think. I've got some other opinions, one of whom happened to be a later pope, Gregory the Great. He had disagreed with what they had decided at Ippo and Carthage. But they did decide that, and they were consistent in that decision all the way up to the Council of Trent. Thank you, Richard. Over to you. <laughs> Give it to him, I Richard. can't believe he's going to let me have the last. You have word about on four this. minutes here. So. <laughs> well, let me tell you the the and this isn't a, really a Catholic versus Protestant argument. It's a it's a difference of opinion among historians, church historians, that uh, the 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 problem is what we know is that in 1521, when Martin Luther was excommunicated mm -hmm. at the Diet of Worms. Uh, worms. 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 I like it. And, spelled uh, worms. Well, it's spelled the Diet of Worms. You yeah, know, but that's it's, not appetizing, is it? The Diet of Worms, I've often. But anyhow, at the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, when Luther was excommunicated, and the church was divided, and uh, we, ever since then, Protestant and Catholic. Uh, at that time, what we do know is that there was a division in the church over these apocryphal books that he's talking about. The, uh, they're, they're a group of, depending on how they're put together in, into documents, between seven and 15, yeah. I think, is, is the number that makes this Bible thicker than that. Books that are in the Catholic Bible, not in the Protestant Bible. Old it, Testament, remember. Yeah, Old Testament Old books, Testament. Uh, Old Testament apocrypha. apocrypha. Uh, at the time that the Reformation happened, 1521, 1522, there was a divided opinion, and the Protestant, uh, un under the leadership of Martin Luther, uh, did not uh, adopt the Apocrypha. So that the Protestant Bible in, from 1522 uh, on has been a Bible without those books. They adopted now, the Jamnian canon. They adopted what he calls the Jamnian canon. Uh, the point is, it did not have these books of Apocrypha. Now, the explanation that I have studied uh -huh. has been that at Carthage, back when they made the real final decision about the 27 books of the New Testament, at that point, they said, Okay, we've got the books of the Old Testament. They include the law, five books, the prophets, 21 books, the writings, another 13 books, total of 39 books. They did not accept the apocryphal books, but they said we must keep them attached to the Bible for educational purposes. The reason that we really need to get into this show is that these were books that sort of connect the Old Testament to the New Testament and cover the period of some 200 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. So that's what these books are about. The books of the Maccabees, for instance, which were leaders uh, of Jews during that period. Uh, and what my understanding of history is that at Carthage, when the 27 books were canonized, these books we call Apocrypha were attached but not canonized. And that it wasn't until after the Reformation, over a thousand years later, that the Catholic Church finally said, we've got to decide whether these books are canon scripture or not. And at the Council of Trent, uh, the one thing that we, I think, would agree on is that after Trent, there never was a question again in the Catholic Church or the Protestant churches. <coughs> Catholic Church, it is canon. Protestant churches, can you imagine uh, our trying to get together all the Protestants, the Baptists, the Church of Christ, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, the Lutherans, and say, well, we want to add seven, maybe 15 books to the Bible. Can you imagine the chaos that would happen? Well, the Catholics have it. Well, that would be the reason we wouldn't, you That's know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me respond to all that, all right? You see, what Richard is saying is certainly true to some extent, not a whole lot, but to some extent. <clears throat> You've got a majority opinion and a minority opinion in the Catholic Church. 
the majority opinion is that the decisions at Hippo, Carthage, and Hippo, and Florence, and all the way up to Trent was, yes, we've had these books. We've always had these books. These were the books that the early apologists were using when they were trying to convert people in the first few centuries. So we're going to keep them. The minority view was, no, that there should be a, a, a few less books. See? And what Richard is saying to you is his contention is, even though that was the majority view in the Catholic point of view, it was not till Trent that they said, take it or leave it, this is it, or go, go to hell became, in effect. became see? the uh, final right. decision. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to add in just before we okay, quit. One is, quick. I think we ought to canonize it. Oh, you come over to my so, side. No, I, uh -huh. I, I just believe that it's yeah. a part. I think that the Protestant churches should take the Apocrypha yeah. and put it in. I think it's important yeah. material that we should have. Uh, the other thing is that, that we ought to mention before we quit is that the Catholic uh, doctrine of purgatory That's is right. based on a passage of Scripture yeah, in these those. documents uh, and not in the other part that the Protestants have. So we Protestants can't have purgatory. That's right. They may go to it, but they can't have it. Yeah. So anyway, when they say... I like purgatory. Let's get it back <laughs> I in I think there. it's a you good know? idea. Purgatory helps. Anyway, that's a fairly good... That's why our, pro, our Bibles are a bit different. In the, <coughs> but look how they solve it. They just The Protestants just put it in the back of the book, and there it is. If you want to read it, read it. Listen, it's been great to have you. We didn't let you ask too What's many questions. There? It's yeah, all right. there it is. <laughs> so anyway, it's been great to have you. Thank you, folks, for being with us. Thank you for, for watching, and may God bless you all. Thank you, Richard. Today's program has been brought to you by a grant from your local Knights of Columbus Council. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal order of Catholic men dedicated to the service of God and neighbor. Last year alone, the Knights provided over $109 million and 55 million volunteer hours helping those in need. The Knights of Columbus truly surge with service. Deacon Walsh and Dr. Shriver would like to hear from you if you have questions or topics you want discussed. Or if you'd like a free booklet giving further information about the topics discussed today, write We Believe at Post Office Box 50654, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. That's We Believe, Post Office Box 50654, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. Visit our website at www.webelieveshow.org. That's www.webelieveshow.org. Our email address is jimwalsh at webelieveshow.org. When you write, be sure to mention the number of the program. This is program number 838. Thanks for watching. We believe. We Believe is designed to promote better understanding among persons of different faiths. Deacon Walsh and Dr. Shriver have recorded a 16-part series available on CD or cassette, providing a broad overview of the Christian religion. Deacon Walsh explains the teachings of the Catholic faith, and Dr. Shriver responds with a Protestant perspective. For information, write We Believe, P.O. Box 50654, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205, or visit our website at webelieveshow.org.